Hello everyone, Enrique here from The Machine Must Work. Today we're going to take a quick look at our newest extension, Selector for Premiere Pro, that lets you easily filter and select your items and clips. Let's take a quick look. First option you have up here, it's between items or clips. Items are from your project panel and clips are from your sequences. If we start with items, if I want to add a filter, I can either just go in the drop down and select it, or I can click up here and start typing the filter. So if I go for an in bin filter and I want items that are in the bin called assets, I can go back out, hit select. All the items that were in the bin assets have been selected. If I want to narrow it down, I can go in here, add another filter. Say I want only the ones that are shorter than five seconds. I can then select those. If I want to narrow it down even more, I can just keep stacking filters. So if the name starts with A005, I can go here and select. And then I know that these clips that have been selected, in this case only one, it's in the bin assets, it's under five seconds, and it's from my real A005 that I put the name here. Once you're happy with that selection, then you can start creating presets. We have two options of presets. If we go here, you can see that we have a preset and a live preset. I'll show you the difference. If I create a preset now, and I name it assets under five, and I create, this is the preset that I get. You see that there is an eye on the side here, representing that it's an item preset. And when you have a clip preset, you have a C on the side here. If I go back to my select tab here, and I create now a live preset. I can even call it the same name if I want. Asset Sender 5. And I hit create. Now I have a second preset for items here that has a red eye on it. The red represents a live preset. So you can have live presets for clips and for items. Now to the difference. If we go back out. If I have another selection in the project panel here and I hit this preset, I get that item selected again. Right now, if I hit the live preset, I'm going to get the same selection because nothing changed it. But say, for example, that I had another clip here that matches the same parameters. In this case, I'm just going to copy and paste this clip. If I hit the preset, we get only that clip. If we hit the live preset, we get those two clips. So the difference is that a preset keeps that selection from the time that you created it. And the live preset actually runs those filters again the time that you click on it. What this means is that you can also create selection presets that are not live from your own selection. So if you haven't run any filters, you just created an arbitrary selection here. You can just go in here and create a preset. And then you hit create. So to show you, I can click on this one, get that one back, and then click on that one and get those three selected again. For both of them, you just have to give it a name and you easily create a preset. These are per project, so they are saved in a file next to your project. So whenever you open a different project, you see that you have different presets saved depending on what you created already. At every tab of the extension, so at the select, the presets or the preferences, you see that, that you always have available down here our quick access bar. The first option we have in the quick access, it's clips to items. So if we go back out, if I select a few clips here and I hit clips to items, I now have selected those items that are linked to those clips in the sequence here. The next one, it's the opposite. So if I select a couple project items and I hit items to clips, it selects those clips that are referencing those project items. The next one, it's clips instances. So if I select one clip, I hit instances and I now get all the instances from that clip that are in the sequence. The next one, it's an invert. So if I have a selection that I created, I just want to invert it. I quickly hit invert and it gets me the opposite selected. The next few ones are pretty straightforward. So you can either select adjustment layers, all your motion graphic templates. You can select all the offline clips in your sequence. You can select all your video or all your audio clips. To select clips, the steps are the same. So we go under here in clips. You say you want clips that are longer than five seconds or four seconds. And then you add another filter. You want it not to be offline. Hit select. 
and it selects now clips that are longer than four seconds and that are not offline. If you want to narrow it down, let's say you don't want adjustment layer, you hit select and those adjustment layers are not on the selection anymore. You can also create presets for clips, same as with the items. So if I say I want to create a preset out of this, I can just come here, hit preset, custom clips, create, there we go. Now we have our preset here. If you created a lot of presets and you want to clean it up, you can just go to that preset, hold Ctrl Shift Alt and click on it and that removes it. Under preferences, we have just a few options here. You can choose compact mode for your presets. In this case, we had compact mode on. I'll turn it off just to show you. If we put it off and we go back, here you can see that it shows you how many clips have been selected or how many items have been selected on that preset. If we create a live preset, now it actually lists for you which filters you had on. So in this case, it's gonna tell me that it's gonna only select clips that are longer than four seconds, that are not offline and not adjustment layer. This can be turned on or off in here in the preferences in compact mode. So it gets a cleaner look. If you want to auto load your last used settings, you just leave this on. This way, when you come back, whatever filters you had here in clips or in items stay loaded for you. The last option just lets you set which level of notifications you want to get. If you feel like you're getting too many notifications, go with bother me with errors only and you'll get the least possible. One last nice thing that we have added here is that you have an option of knowing why a clip or an item is not being selected. So if we go back out, hit select, these two items have been selected. Let's say I thought this item here should have been selected, but it was not. We can actually go in here, select only that item. And then in the select button here, before you click it, you hold Ctrl Alt Shift and you hit select. Now you're gonna get a notification. It's hidden under the webcam here, but I'm gonna open it. And now you can see the last notification we got here. Item did not pass all filters, item is not shorter than five seconds. So now you know that that item was not shorter than five seconds and that's why it was not selected. This was a quick look at Selector for Premiere Pro. It's available now on aescripts.com so you can get it there. Thanks for watching.